Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to give an overview of the class. I'm going to go a little bit into detail about um, sort of the structure of how everything works. Uh, and I'm going to maybe try to clarify some things in the syllabus that might be a little bit confusing. You know, I, I just want to make sure that everyone knows uh, sort of what's going on with this class as much as I possibly can. Also going to give you a tour of the canvas so that you know where to, you know, expect to find certain things like where to check your grades or something like that. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is my attendance policy. Um, obviously, we're not meeting in this class, so there isn't really a form of attendance. However, the way I'm going to gauge attendance in this class in order to comply with um, school policy uh, is by completion of work. Now, um, if you have not communicated with me or participated in uh, discussions like some of the help boards or submitted assignments for two consecutive weeks, I'm going to try to contact you and say, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, are you still in this class? And if I continue not to hear from you for five days, then uh, I'm going to drop you from the class. And this is to help, you know, make sure that your GPA isn't affected if you forget to drop a class and then don't do anything in that class. And then all of a sudden you have like a 10% at the very end or something like that. Uh, it's also to comply with um, school policy. So I do have to drop students that are not active in my class. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do, if you haven't uh, done anything in the class in two weeks, I'm going to notify you. I'm going to say, hey, um, like, do you need any extra time to complete assignments or anything like that? Or, um, you know, try to complete at least some missing work so that I know you're still active. Um, I really just email me back and just let me know that you're still interested in being part of the class. Uh, that's going to be the easiest way for both of us to, you know, make sure that you don't get dropped from the class. So, you know, if you're having a hard time completing assignments or something like that, if you are unable to complete your work on time, just shoot me an email as soon as you can and say, hey, I'm having a hard time making the deadlines. Um, please, uh, you know, know that I'm still trying to work on this, uh, but I just need the, uh, like, I, I need extra time in order to complete it so that I know that you are, you know, having, you know, needing that extra time. So I know that you're still working on stuff, that you're still engaged in the class. Speaking of late work, though, my late work policy is that deadlines are very soft. Um, I provide deadlines to you so that you know essentially to complete your assignment by a specific day in order to stay on track with a certain, you know, within the class. However, I understand that things happen in life and I don't want to punish you if life gets in the way of completing assignments by a pretty arbitrary date. So I want you to have that flexibility to not have to turn things in by a very specific date if you are having trouble doing that because of external life situations or, you know, whatever is going on. I think that's totally fine for you to turn stuff in late. However, of course, you run the risk of falling behind in the class and you run the risk of having a hard time catching up or having to send a lot of time in order to catch up. And that can be really rough. So I want you to try to make the deadlines if you are able to make those deadlines because keeping up with the deadlines is going to be really important, especially with this class. Uh, programming classes can sort of 
generate a lot of work out of nowhere if your code for whatever reason just isn't working and you can't tell why it can take a little bit of time to actually figure out what's going on uh, and i would say that this applies much more so than any other discipline that at least that i have ever taken is that programming classes can sort of spiral out of control if you aren't careful about your time management so time management is really important that's why i do provide the deadlines to say hey you should complete this assignment by this date in order to stay on track with the class but you know try to complete it as early as possible try to do a little bit at a time so you're not leaving everything to the end and you know yeah try to try to have everything done before or by the deadline as if possible my de my late work policy is to give you the flexibility for when things go wrong in life and all that kind of stuff so those attendance and late work policies kind of coincide with each other because um you know it's okay for you to turn in work late but also let me know if uh you are starting to turn in stuff late because you might start running into that two weeks uh between submitted assignments thing that i have in my attendance policy and that's where i start reaching out to you and say hey are you still in this class so good communication essentially is really important with all of this so now that i've talked about the late policy i can actually get into the to do list over here the to do list is essentially everything that i want you to do for this class which you know essentially i'm putting everything in this class on the to-do list because I, I do want you to read through everything so you'll see the introduction page the introduce yourself um discussion board the uh, pre-assessment quiz all that kind of stuff so like you have this idea of the things that you need to do right here but don't go off of the to-do list use this as a list of things that you need to take care of but don't just start clicking through line by line by line and figuring out, okay, I'm going to do the introduction first, introduce yourself next, the pre-assessment quiz after that. Because if you do that kind of stuff, you'll run into some problems. Uh, the to-do list is actually not in an order. Actually, it's not in the order that I present everything in the week one module. We can actually look at that right here. Look how knowledge assessment or the uh, knowledge check pre-assessment quiz thing is the third in the to-do list but if we go to week one it's the second to last in the module and the reason why is because you need to activate your mind tap or uh, your Cengage mind tap account in order to actually do the pre-assessment quiz which re requires this getting access to Cengage mind tap page you need to actually read through this so that you have the instructions to get onto MindTap before you actually do the quiz. Because if you try to do the quiz, um, it's going to just throw you into the registration area and you won't have the instructions on hand. So it's very important that rather than using the to-do list to actually click everything and complete everything like that in that order, it's very important that you actually go through the modules and read through everything in the order that i present this could be a huge problem if say for chapter five or something like that you are prompted to take the chapter five quiz before actually watching the chapter five uh, lecture videos right so you want to make sure that you're doing everything in the correct order and that order is going to be the order that i present in the modules this is why i say that the modules are the most important thing for your success in this class because it tells you how to do everything and it gives you the proper ordering for everything that you have to do. Now in the canvas, uh, since we're here, you know, you'll have the modules. Uh, there's going to be one module for each week going from week one all the way to weeks uh, 16 and then finals week. Uh, and then you'll also have some links to other pages right here. Um, now this sidebar might actually change between 
when I'm recording this video and when you're actually looking at the class because I have to make some final edits to the class page before I actually, you know, publish it for everyone. But uh, one thing that I do want to point out, actually a, a few things that I want to point out, point out are some of the different links that you will have access to here. Um, there are some tutoring related links here and here. Um, you can also go to the discussions right here and that'll, that'll show you a list of all the discussions that are available to you. Uh, in this case, it would be the student to student questions up here and then the week one help board and the introduce yourself discussions will all be available here. And as we go through and get more, get through the different weeks, you'll see more and more week, weekly help boards. So if you want to quickly go to a discussion, rather than just scrolling through all the modules, you can go to the discussions page and go there. Similar for assignments, uh, you may or may not see this by the time it's published, I don't know, but that'll show you all the assignments that are available to you. Um, not that I'd recommend using the assignments page if it is available, because, um, you know, you might end up going through the assignments in the wrong order or before watching the lecture video or before we've even like covered that material in the class. So I would stick to the modules for that one. And then there's the grades. Uh, you can click on the grades. It will give you a grade breakdown of everything that you've done in the class. Um, we'll talk more about MindTap, but it's an external platform that hosts the quizzes and assignments that you're actually going to do. Um, but the cool thing about MindTap is that it syncs with Canvas. So all the grades on MindTap are going to show up on Canvas. Um, the Canvas gradebook will contain all of the MindTap work, but it will also contain Canvas specific things like your final. So it's going to give you a more accurate picture of your grade, which is pretty cool. All right, well, that is a quick tour of the Canvas and some notes about information on the syllabus. Of course, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to email me and ask them, and I'll try to clarify everything as best as I can. Um, Another thing, by the way, that you will end up seeing on this homepage and also on the sidebar as soon as those become available are announcements because I will try to make weekly announcements as part of my communication. So you'll be able to look at the announcements and you know, read them, uh, click through them, close them once you've already read them, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, Canvas is a pretty powerful tool and it's going to be very helpful for succeeding in this course. So I do hope that you uh, keep in mind everything that I've talked about here and that you remember the best way to access all the material that you need is going through the modules. Very, very important. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching.